It's under the lights on the CW. Brought to you by Dairy Queen, Alter Federal Credit Union, Heat Night Associates, Palshe Chevrolet, and Alti Sudlink. All right, welcome in to Under the Lights on the CW. I am Tina Wynn, and this, of course, is Johnny Condon. And One and only. Johnny, <laughs> the final game of the regular season tonight. And I'm sure it was emotional for a couple teams as they were playing their final game of the regular season, but it was also, I'm sure, emotional for some others as they were looking to not play their final game of the season. I was out at the District of Doom for Van and Henderson, and boy, Henderson Lions are ready to play in that one. They're ready to go. And, you know, this is such a bittersweet time in the day. I've been saying it all day, 5, 6, 10 o'clock. It's great in the sense that we're getting ready to vaunt into the postseason, but for these seniors, I'll tell you what, it happened to me. You lose on your final game as a senior. It's something that sticks with you for your entire life, and the last time these kids are going to strap up pads, some of them, I was yeah. out in Chapel Hill tonight. They're an example of a team who's going home after tonight. There's a lot of other teams out there who has played their final snaps, but you know, we haven't played our final snap just because That's this is right. the final regular season edition of Under the Lights. You're going to stick with us for a whole other month, and what started off with our Game of the Week poll, we wanted to hear who you thought was going to win our Game of the Week, and I'll tell you what, America, or at least East Texas, uh, you guys would be wrong. The Van Vandals taking on the Henderson Lions and Tina. Uh, tell them why they were wrong. All right, let's send it to our game of the week. Van and Henderson Lions linking up and walking through the crowd before taking the field of tradition they do before every single home game right here. Lions first possession. Quarterback Caleb Mefford looks deep for Jerry on, Jerry on Fuller, and he makes a nice play coming back to the ball for the catch. And then just a few plays later, man, it is Elijah Jones. Takes the handoff and right into the end zone he goes. Lions go up seven to nothing. And then the Van Vandals attempt to answer with quarterback Jayton Moffitt tossing to Hunter Hitchens. He runs it in for the score. Extra point would be no good. Lions seven, Vandals six. Still in the first quarter, Henderson ball and Medford throws the screen to Kevin Fields, who does a nice flip right into the end zone. Lions 14 to six, Vandals. Answer as Marcus Orozco takes the handoff in for the score. Lions 14 to 13. And then late in the half, Medford takes the snap and keeps it dashing up the field before going down right inside the five. That would lead to a touchdown. Lions 21, Vandals 13 at the half. And Henderson goes on to win this one 35 to 20. And they will officially earn a playoff berth. Does that surprise Man. you? Because it doesn't surprise me. Henderson mm -hmm. is one of the more battle-tested teams around East Texas. Right. They slipped up against Palestine, and as you're going to see in a couple of minutes, Palestine, uh, they're no, they're not your daddy's Palestine Wildcats, I'll tell you that. They're a good team this year. But one thing, I know you've been out there so many times. Right. You've talked to Coach Castles. Yes. This is a team that's fought through adversity all season long, and now they're headed to the postseason. Absolutely, and he mentioned it to me earlier before the game. It's kind of been up and down, but as you've been to a Castles uh, mm -hmm. practice, I mean, he is stern on those guys, so no surprise that they can fight through adversity and get the win tonight. Well, moving from 4A, let's move up to 5A, another district of doom, Marshall versus Pine Tree, and you got to bundle up on this cold night. And how about this? Our former East Texas Professional Credit Union Player of the Week player for Week 11, that is Sevion Williams, and he might run all the way to fate. Yeah, that's where he'll be playing football next year for the Razorbacks, and that's a quick 7-0 lead on senior night of all nights. Later on, DJ Freeman my goodness, a broken up pass by the Marshall Mavericks. We just got players of the week all over the place. Back-to-back -back quarterbacks that are two of the best in each Texas. And here, if you don't believe me, look for yourself. Sevy on Williams to the 10, to the 5, and he will waltz into the end zone for the touchdown. Marshall, they locked up the division, uh, I should say the district, last week over White House. They beat the Wildcats today. They take down the Pine Tree Pirates by a score of 38 to 33 and we talked about adversity earlier yes he did maybe no team in east texas maybe the state of texas that's fought through more mm -hmm. than the marshall mavericks they lose their quarterback earlier in the year they have the tragic passing of hayden blaylock midway through the season and how do they respond with a win going on a three game oh sorry a seven game win streak well, they started out zero and three and then now seven game win streak johnny what do you think has been the difference maker for that team? it's simply sevion williams jj green transfers schools everyone thinks that the world is falling out in marshall he heads over to shreveport and who steps in sevion williams who was supposed to be in the plan he's an offensive weapon as dangerous as anybody in the state they moved him to quarterback and after talking to head coach jake grudel the way he mm -hmm. runs that read option it's been fantastic but you Absolutely. know there's a lot of teams here in east Texas that needed to win and get in. Tonight was virtually a playoff game over at Rose Stadium as Mesquite Horn was taking on the Tyler Lee Red Raiders. The winner, they get Waco Midland in the postseason. So, Tim Wolf, take it away. Well, Johnny and Tina, the Red Raiders came into this senior night facing the scariest ultimatum for a senior football player. Win or go home. 
and they showed up. Lee got off to a fast start behind the legs of Bryson Donnell, who punches in a one-yard score here. That makes it 7-0 Lee in the first quarter. Next, here's a connection that looks solid tonight. Mark Patton hits Jeremiah Turner there. He'll bring it into Jaguar territory, and that sets up Bryson Donnell's second touchdown of the evening. That will make it 13-0 Lee. Now, Lee would score again to make it 21-0 in the second before Mesquite Hill responds. Here's Charles Crawford bringing the score to 21-6 Lee. Now, we've seen Bryson Donald, but don't forget about this guy, Jamarian Miller. He's pretty good, too, and he's in for six. That makes it 28-6 at the half. Now, in the fourth quarter with Lee up 35-6, Mesquite Horn knocking at the door. Ben Wyatt could not be denied the end zone. That makes it 35-14 to 14 and gives the Jaguars a little glimmer of hope. Well, that hope would be short-lived as this onside kick doesn't go exactly as planned when Devontae Bolton scoops it up and takes it all the way home to a Lee 42-14 victory. And that punches the Red Raiders' ticket to the playoffs. Now guys, I know we usually wait till the beginning of next week to pick our player of the week, but I'm gonna cast an unofficial vote right now for Bryson Donald. That kid is absolutely unstoppable. He was all over the field tonight. And next to Jamarian Miller in that backfield, that makes the Red Raiders a very tough team to defend going into the postseason. In Tyler, Tim Wolf, CBS 19. All right, thanks to a big win for Tyler Lee right there. Now the Kilgores, they host Carthage. Kilgore, one of those four teams fighting for a playoff spot. First drive of the game, Carthage. Quarterback Kai Horton looks right, but finds Mason Courtney in the left for an easy 20-yard tote right into the end zone. Seven to nothing. So in greedy Carthage fashion, of course, they attempt an onside kick, and the ball is loose, but Kilgore comes up with it. But they cannot convert. Next play, Carthage with it at midfield. Kai Horton looking and launches this one downfield to find Kel Williams for a 50-yard touchdown. Leaves three defenders in the dust. Kilgore going for it on fourth and nine, looking to get Carthage to jump. And hey, they do five extra yards, but later on it would be Dalton. McElyay decides to go for it all right here. McElyay decides to go for it all to Brian Brown, but no catch. Excuse me, this is a catch, and he will take this one right near midfield. Well, nonetheless, I'll tell you something right now. The, they couldn't have even played the second half of this game. I think Carthage would have been able to hold on. They go on to demolish the Kilgore Bulldogs by a score of 42-11 to 11 in the Bulldog Bowl. And another game we had tonight is we check out the score of New Diana and Dangerfield. Well, if we look at the bottom this one, I get to look below me. Boom, we have a final, Dangerfield 20, New Diana 16. Uh, no surprise there, Dangerfield, they played pretty well this season and they Absolutely. go into the final week of the regular season with a big win. And well, end the season on a good note. We're not gonna go anywhere, so you can't go anywhere because we are just getting started here on Under the Lights. Tina and I are gonna have much more East Texas high school football action after the break. All right, welcome back everyone. Thanks for sticking with us on Under the Lights. Well, as we reach the finish line of the 2019 East Texas High School football regular season, we took a chance to look back at some of our best coaches of the week. And one thing all of these coaches have in common is their passion for their job. No, not just the wins and losses, but the passion for their players. These coaches have had such an impact on their players. And here on CBS 19, we're pr privileged enough to tell their stories. And this week was, out, was our, uh, Whataburger Coach of the Week at in Winona, Keelan Kincaid, and he shares with us his story. For the Winona Wildcats, it's been a season of being relentless. Sitting at 5-4 and four overall, 3-3 three and three in district, the Wildcats are hoping to punch their playoff ticket for the fifth consecutive time. They never, they never quit. They never uh, stop playing, and uh, they're pretty tenacious and relentless, and they get after it, and um, that's something that we preach, and... We make sure that we demand out of them, and, and they've delivered that for us. In his sixth season leading the charge at Winona, it was one coach on the hardwood who planted the coaching seed in Keelan Kincaid. Growing up, I, I never wanted a coach, and um, I think it's a calling from God that I am coaching. And uh, Coach Lane Norsworthy, my high school basketball coach, after I got the league and had um, a year or two off or however long it was, 
he really convinced me. He's like, you'll do a good job. You, those kid, kids need you. Kids uh, can learn a lot from you, and you can guide some kids to, to be more than what they, they think they are and expect to be. And he pulled me in, and I'm still in here 12 years later. For the former SMU and Dallas Cowboys running back, it's all about focusing on the now. You got to prepare for the right now, for wh whatever moment it is. And uh, your preparation is going to put you where you need to be within that moment. And you got to have a high sense of urgency and seize the moment. I mean, there's no tomorrow. Um, there is a tomorrow, but you got you to gotta think and live and play like there is no tomorrow because you never know what tomorrow is going to bring. Today has enough troubles as his own, so you got to capitalize on whatever's in front of you, capitalize on the opportunity to give to you. For Whataburger Coach of the Week, I'm Tina Wynn. All right, well, it was awesome to chat with Coach Kincaid earlier uh, this week, and one thing he told me, he used to play for SMU mm -hmm. and the Cowboys, but he Pony is up. really pumped for his SMU Mustangs because they are having an awesome season right now. They were having an awesome season until they went despite, into Memphis the other night. And one loss. Nonetheless, yeah, yeah. a despite great year for the Mustangs. We'll talk a lot more college football, I'm sure, tomorrow on the show, mm -hmm. but I know he had a short stint with the Dallas Cowboys as well. He did, he did, and he said it was awesome. It's like playing for his hometown team. It's awesome Literally. to have his community here and go up there and cheer him on. So he said and he's taking come a small school and own and he's done a pretty darn good job Absolutely. if you ask me so we're going to try to keep doing a pretty darn good job as we move on to chapel hill taking on palestine and i'll tell you what these two teams that team right there the palestine wildcats show no respect especially by us in the media early on didn't think they'd have a chance of sniffing the postseason but here they are in bulldog stadium with a chance to go to the postseason and on the first play for scrimmage jeremiah davis says i want to keep running all the way to the playoffs He's going to take this bad boy 47 yards to the house. The Cats would miss the ensuing PAT, so it's 6-0 Palestine early. Later on, after a Bulldogs 3 now, Palestine moves the ball down to the Chapel Hill 4. Mr. Davis, he'll do the rest. He'll take the carry a short distance, untouched into the end zone. Before you can blink, it's 13-0 Wildcats. Later in the quarter, when you thought they were going to blow him out, while the Dogs make a huge play on 4th and 5, Brack Dyer goes low and makes the tackle turnover on downs. But Kobe Coker and that Bulldog offense, well, they just couldn't get anything cooking. Spins trying to make a play, and he's swarmed by a pack of Wildcats. Palestine, they go on to spoil Chapel Hill Senior Night by a score of 28 to 21. Let's head over Spring Hill. Oh, we're going to take you right into your living room on that first play. Jay Rockwell with that touchdown. How about the Spring Hill Panthers? We've been following them all year long in our docu-series. That's a great touchdown. Later on, Pitt is into the end zone. Quarterback Kamari McCain. Under center, hands it off to Braden Bolton for the Pirates score. So now it's only a 14-7 game, one score game. Now Gage White, one of the best quarterbacks in East Texas. We heard his story earlier. Didn't look like it right there. That is a big man interception. How about it? Picked off by Pittsburgh's Trace Reynolds, who takes it 20 yards before he's brought down by Wade. White, I should say. And Gage White now getting the play from the sidelines. And this is what he does best. Gets back there and slings it. Who else? Jay Rockwell for the touchdown. Then later, it's going to be the Pirates again. Picked off by Kamaria McCain with the snap. He's going to launch into it. No, excuse me, that's Johnny Clompton. He's got a great name, I must say. And at halftime, Spring Hill, they'd have the lead 20 to seven. This one went final in Spring Hill. They get a huge win in the final week of the regular season, 28. 214. All right, thanks, Johnny. Now we got to go check in on Wills Point and Russ tonight. 625 to go in the first quarter. Wills Point up 19 to nothing, but Russ trying to get back in the game as they punch it in from one yard out. Eagles trail 19 to 6. Still in the first, it is Landon Gates. He will keep this one himself as he rolls right. It's taken down near midfield. Later in the game, Gates on the run, but he finds Josephine McGowan. McGowan fumbles the ball as it is recovered by the Tigers. Big recovery for Wills Point right here because moments later, Tyler Barker hits Granado Gonzalez and he's taken down inside the 20 and the Tigers go on to victory 46 to 18. And don't you go anywhere because when we get back, we'll head over back around East Texas to bring you the best highlights from the best games. Don't go anywhere.
everybody, welcome back. Thanks for sticking with us tonight on Under the Lights on the CW. Well, the Marshall Mavericks, they started the 2019 high school football season with sky high expectations. The Mavs were almost a near lock to win District 95A Division 2 and make a deep postseason run. So when they started the year 0-3, many question marks were raised, but instead of folding under the pressure of an early season setback, the Mavs, well, they came together. They rallied and they went on to win six straight and tonight make it seven. Those wins are thanks in large part to senior quarterback Sevion Williams, who's our Week 11 East Texas Professional Credit Union Player of the Week. Great moments are born from great opportunity. And when the opportunity arose to play quarterback for a historic program like the Marshall Mavericks, senior Sevion Williams accepted the challenge. I was like, dang, I ain't, I ain't played quarterback since junior high. And I was like, so I got to do whatever I got to do for the team. Williams entered the 2019 season as one of Marshall's most skilled offensive weapons. But after quarterback J.J. Green transferred schools, the Mavs started looking for a dynamic playmaker to lead the Marshall offense. And then uh, obviously with the, some of the quarterback situation stuff that we went through, we had to make him the starting quarterback. It wasn't something that necessarily he wanted to do, but uh, he realized it's what the team needed. And he's kind of grown into the leader that he is uh, in that position. I have fun. I like it because I get the ball every play and I score a lot. I get a lot of yards. Um, he's been extremely coachable. The kids believe in him. The, the community believes in him. And, and he's, uh, you know, playing quarterback in, in Marshall is not an easy feat. And uh, he's, he's carried that burden uh, extremely well. After starting the season an uncharacteristic 0-3, the Mavericks got their second win. And when district play started, the Mavs offense, and Williams specifically, started clicking on all cylinders. It took a little while. People were in f focus, but they finally got us together. And we finally understand where we under where we stood and we took it serious. And Williams' ability to make plays with his legs along with his arm has made this martial offense dangerous as well as multidimensional. Anytime you can have someone in the back back half that uh, you know can can put the ball you know down and, and take off running, it definitely helps your offense. Um, you know, it keeps defenses um, you know accountable to the quarterback, which is hard to do. You know, especially in today's game. I'm running the read option. If he crashes, I'm pulling. I'm going to the hell. And then obviously his ability to run the RPO and, and the read option stuff that we do is is uh, you know really made us super dynamic and, and super multiple. Um, and so we're excited to you know play Pine Tree this week, taking it one week at a time after. Pine Tree, you know, we've locked up the, the first place in our district and looking forward to hopefully a deep playoff run. And Williams isn't just hoping for a deep run in the postseason. He set his sights on going all the way to state. You I mean, feel like we can go all the way now. All the way? Yeah, all the way now, really. We got our confidence up. We done got comfortable around each other. All right, well, awesome job on that, Johnny. First oh, well, off, thank you. what else did you learn about Savion Williams that you that you can't see, you know, on, on the field? Well, something, you know, you see these kids on TV, and while they look good, they look talented, they look fast, and then you mm -hmm. get to see it in person. I shook his hand, and I'm looking up at him like this. I mean, he's a 17, 18-year-old kid. Definitely taller than Johnny. And I'm 24 <laughs> over here, and I'm just like, oh, my goodness. He's built like an Adonis, like a Greek god. But I'll tell you something right now. <laughs> when he's running around that edge, we were talking about it earlier, his ability – his head coach Jake Riedel said to run the mm -hmm. RPO, to run the pull, to run the veer, to run the read option. Mm -hmm. Some things that he's able to do that just pure athleticism takes over. You can't coach. And speaking of coaching, I, Jake Riedel, excellent hire. We see it in the NFL. Yeah. We see it in college. A lot of these young offensive-minded guys, so creative, put their players in the right mm -hmm. positions to make big explosive plays. And what they say, the old cliche, big-time players make big-time plays in big-time games. And when it became crunch time, Sevian Williams stepped up to the plate. And this is Drake Greedle, by the way. First year as a head coach. I mean, this guy has mm -hmm. dealt with so much and has handled it all so well. But that, I also want to say in this District 9, 5, 8, Division 2, sure. I mean, this was a district so with so much talent. I mean, so much expectation yes. too going into it. Yeah, with Marshall winning district, White House, Lindell, and Pine Tree, they're all in the playoffs tonight. Which and three one of those fantastic teams, quarterbacks between yes. the three of them. Which of those teams has impressed you the most, Johnny? Well, obviously, I'm going to disqualify Marshall just because of how they've been able to rebound, and we've mm -hmm. talked about them on the show a lot. I want to give some love to head coach Marcus Gold, quarterback yeah. Caden Case, wide receiver Skyler Trevino, mm -hmm. and those Wildcats over at White House because that's another team a lot like the Marshall Mavericks. They started the season maybe not the way they intended one and two. on. One yeah. and two. Then they get a huge win over their rival in the Battle of Lake Tyler mm -hmm. over Chapel Hill. Caden Casey got comfortable. He was a senior playing his first year at quarterback. Mm -hmm. And Marcus Gold, he's one patient head coach, and he's yeah. been able to get his guys to the next level. This is his second year as a head coach, and last year he took them to the most uh, win – 
having the most wins since Patrick Mahomes' mm -hmm. senior year. Pretty good guy, mind yeah. you. So he's doing a lot of great things there. So Mahomes played for the Wildcats. Now you're going to show we us gotta the Tiger. we got to take it to uh, the Tiger Bowl. Dale Irwin and his Arp Tigers hosting Troop tonight in Arps. The defense starts off strong as fourth and one Troop. For Troop as Arps, Cajun Horton sacks Jordan Elliott. And then Arps, Trent Jones takes the quarterback keeper. Watch this. 44 yards for the touchdown. Woo! He cannot be stopped, but the extra point would be no good, and it is six to nothing. Arp, second quarter now. Troop back to punt deep in the end of their field, but a bad snap, and that's a safety for Arp. Tigers go up eight to nothing. Later on in the game, Trent Jones doesn't get the low snap, and it's Troop's Anthony Salgado covers the fumble. Troop offense taken off now as Jordan Elliott hands it off to Desmond Deason. Coming on the sweep, he gets outside and turns it into 25-yard touchdown, 8-7 to seven arp. Troops Jordan Elliott calls his own number as he takes off up the middle to pick up the first down. A couple plays later right now, it is Elliott again on the quarterback keep as he pounds it in for the touchdown, 14-8 to eight, Troop. And that is at the half, and Arp would actually go on to win this one, 45-35. Wow. to 35. That is one heck of an upset. So now, let's head to Bramberg Stadium. White Oak taking on Sabine. And you know what, sometimes when it's cold and they're on that grass field, things, well, it gets a little old school. Early on, gritty game. Both quarterbacks struggled in the air. They had to use their feet because secondary play, well, it was good on both sides. We call those coverage sacks where I'm from. Case in point, White Oak quarterback Blake Barlow scrambling, called for intentional grounding. He finds success here, though, in the hands of Sam Dusket. But unfortunately, he's going to fumble, but his teammate jumps on one of those nights. But it was Sabine's gritty play and run that came on top with the W. I'll tell you, the Sabine Cardinals, they were undefeated until last week. They dropped a big one, but they come back and they take down White Oak by a score of 23-7. to Union Grove taking on Alto. Big regular season for the Yellow Jackets and an emotional season as they were covering from that horrific tornado that affected so many people down there. Early on, it was Union Grove who came to play. Running back Matt Bauer, going to get a nice gain here. And you thought, you know, that was nice. Let's check on him now. Here you're going to see him streaking down the sideline every catches this little flare pass. Head coach Scotty LeMans in his Union Grove line. Some of the best uniforms. I love the simple stuff, Tina. It looked like Penn State. Later, a few more plays. Like, Mr. Johnny. Bauer, he'd finish it off with the big touchdown. But tonight... It was all about those Yellow Jackets down at Alto. And let me tell you, we've been watching a lot of great receivers this season. Maybe none better than wideout Skylar Atkins. The big senior makes the snag, and he's going to take this all the way to the hizzy house. Also, they win by a score of 50 to 15. Ooh. 50 to 15, my goodness, they Alto. win for them. You can say the Yellow Jackets, they brought their sting all season Absolutely. long. Absolutely. I've been trying. <laughs> and I talked to uh, head coach Ricky Meeks uh, a little bit earlier on Ricky in the Joe season. Ricky Joe Meeks, one of my favorite there names of any coach ever. Ricky oh, Joe Meeks. Say that one more time, Johnny. Ricky Joe Meeks. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, he's proud of his guys so far. I mean, this is a team, that he, a program that he's taken just completely mm -hmm. turned around. And especially so. it means so much more to the people this year. Again, mm -hmm. I was down there. I know that was a little before you got here at CBS 19. Devastation. Old old elementary schools, old gymnasiums, literally in ruins. And for that team to rebound and play the way they played after such tragedy, they made a lot of people down there. Happy. And Coach Meek said it was super cool to see this uh, the game of football kind of bring this community together and start to bring joy to them. And we so. saw you as you did her, his former Whataburger Coach of the Week package. Yes, you did a great job. You can find it online, mm -hmm. cbs19.tv. But we're going to take a quick break, but don't go anywhere because when we come back, we're going to take a look at some scores from across East Texas. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Under the Lights on the CW. Hey everybody, welcome back to Under the Lights on the CW. So, Tina, take a breath. We've been doing a ton of I'm highlights. Breathing. Are you breathing? I don't know about this, but we're running around getting highlights tonight. I was short of breath. I got to start working out or something. But catch up for the, the guys, guys that the we field. couldn't catch tonight, we're going to show you the final scores. And the John Tyler Lions, well, they got out to Sherman and they give them a good test. They fall by a score of 32 to 27. How about those Longview Lobos? They cap a second straight undefeated regular season as they blow out Mesquite on the road by a score of 49 to 14. Congratulations to John King and his Lobos as we move on to some more scale. Oh, Lindale, 64. This is the first time I'm seeing this play. Wow. This was a shooter over a 100 over points scored down at the Tomato Bowl. Wow. And head coach Chris Cochran, they get a big win, 64 to 50. And then Crandall and Athens, Wow, Athens 
last yesterday, or I should say yesterday, yes, Garrett Hayes, the big tackle, was presented with his All-American jersey, but they get a big Got to keep this going, Johnny, with White House and Halls, but White House taking a win, 28-21. to And then Gilmer and Liberty Ilo. Gilmer, shutout, 44 to nothing. Malakoff and Kim, Mal Whoa. another shutout, 84 to nothing. Then Gladewater and Tatum. Gladewater wins it, 28-14. to Mineola in Winsboro now. Winsboro, they've been doing a lot of winning. They get us win over 33 yeah, to 29 over me. Let's see what I did there. And then Frankston and Albagolda, that one wasn't even close. I picked that one wrong in the paper, so look at me. Winona, 61 to nothing over Quitman. And then Grand Celine, who was so hot early on, they were winning a lot of games. But Harmony, they get a huge win. How Tina. many shout-outs are we going to see tonight? A lot Ooh. of shout-outs. I don't think we're going to see 84 points for the rest of the year, I'll tell mm -hmm. you that. That's quite the feat. But nonetheless, thank you so much for tuning in. Regular season's over, but we're not done. We'll see you next week on your likes little playoff edition. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great night.